Hello and welcome. Welcome, welcome to our finale event. Day number 17 of the My Lean Time Omer edition, where we're counting up to the excitement of Shavuot. It's just a few days away. My name is Orly Waba. I'm the founder of Abraham's Legacy, where our mission is to create technology that enables us to serve Hashem as one. And the Abraham's Legacy Tehillim app is a unique app created in memory of my grandfather, Avraham Ben Polin, Alava Shalom. And it allows people from across the globe to complete books of Tehillim in unison in real time and currently in four languages. But more than that, it creates bonds. And with over a million chapters of Tehillim read, just shy of 20,000 members, this is an incredible community dedicated to connecting further to the power of Tehillim. And I'm so honored to have even a small part in this. I'd like to thank Naomi Jerno for all of her help putting this incredible series together over this past month. And I'd like to thank all of you for being here for our finale. So many of you have been joining night after night, and I cannot tell you how much it means to me. Uh, I feel that we've grown together, we've connected together, and this is just the beginning. We're going to have many, many more events coming your way. And of course, last but certainly not least, I wanna thank Hashem I want to thank Hashem for trusting me, trusting me enough to carry out this important work. So tonight's agenda is as follows. First, we're going to hear from our wonderful, inspiring speaker, Mrs. Chaya Rivka Zwolinski. I'm, I'm so excited that she's joining us. You have no idea. And she's going to be speaking on the topic of Emunat Hashem, self-mastery and Mashiach, focusing on chapter 121 in Tehillim. And after the talk, Please stay on as we wrap up the festival with our raffle, plus an inspiring six-minute Tehillim read through the Abraham's Legacy app. So grab your smartphone if you have one, download this free app, search for Abraham's Legacy, or you could click on the link in the chat. I also would like to mention that I'd like to dedicate tonight's class in memory of my dear aunt Malka, uh, who just passed away this past Thursday. So this past Thursday night, almost exactly as we were having our, our session, she was such a true tzaddika. So I ask that you all have Malka Regina Bat Fortuna Khatun, I'll write the name, in your tefillot. And I pray that her neshama should have an aliyah. So I'm honored. I'm honored to introduce today's speaker, Chaya Rivka Zwolinski. Chaya Rivka is a Breslov teacher, a coach, and the founder of breastlifwomen.org. Her emphasis is on sharing Rabbi Nachman's life-changing teachings with an emphasis on psycho-spiritual healing, relationships, and creativity. She's the editor of The Three-Cornered Shoe. It's a new anthology of creative writing by participants in her Breslov creative writing workshops. She's also the author of several books, including May You Have a Day, Making Every Day Better, with the teachings of Rabbi Nachman Breslov. For classes, women's tours of Uman, and free daily audio messages, you can message her at 914-758-9968. Don't worry, I'll put the, 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 the number in the chat. Or you can learn more by visiting breslovwomen.org. Chaya has been kind enough to generously include her books in today's raffle, so stay tuned for that. So without further ado, please welcome Chaya Rivka Zwolinski. It's such an honor and a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much, Orly. I love returning to the Abraham's Legacy program. And I just want to, for a second, mention to everyone, if you don't have the Abraham's Legacy app, please download it. Get it right away. I just learned from Orly that there are some incredible new upgrades and new technology added to it. And there are over 20,000 women and, and men too saying to Hillam through the Abraham's Legacy app. So please join them. And I want to thank also Naomi Jurno for putting this program together. She works so hard. Event planning is is a much underappreciated uh, task and we all should keep her in mind. And also, I would like to thank the, will, the women of the Tehillim group who have been saying Tehillim for me because I have um, had an illness. And I really want to thank them so much for uh, their Tefillos because they have absolutely 
um, been part of the reason why I'm here today. It's definitely all those to Hillam said on my behalf, and I'd like to thank Esther DiVaroli for organizing the group. I know it's a lot of hard work. Again, all this organization uh, activities are not always thanked, but it takes a tremendous amount of effort and commitment, and I want to thank Esther. Okay, so today I'm going to speak briefly about uh, Parak Kuf Chaf Aleph, chapter 121 in Psalms. And for such a short psalm, there is a lot of commentary on it. And I'm going to begin just by reading a couple of verses from this absolutely beautiful, sweet psalm. Shir Lama'alos, Esa Enai, El Heharim Me Ein Yavo Ezri, Ezri Me'im Adonai, Oste Shamayim Va'aretz. A song for the ascents. I lift my eyes to the mountains. From where will my help come? My help comes from Hashem, the maker of heaven and earth. And this beautiful, sweet psalm is on the simplest level about looking to Hashem for all our salvations. The Midrash Tanhuma on this parak of Tehillim says, El Heharim, upon the mountains, is actually referring to a mortal mountain, Mashiach, and we should look towards him for salvation as well. We look to Hashem for salvation, and we look to the coming of Mashiach for the ultimate salvation and the Geula, of course. Now, with people of Amuna, okay, which I'm assuming includes everyone here, when it comes to the big crises in our lives, it's often a reflex action for us to grab our Sefer Tehillim, to look to Hashem for salvation. This has been ingrained into us. However, for many of us, it's when it comes to the little things in life that we find it difficult to look to Hashem for our salvations. The day-to-day -day stresses of work, day-to-day -day social stresses, somebody says something unkind, your heart's broken and you carry that with you all day. Um, difficulties at home, difficulties just in the daily commute, whatever it is, it's these little things that sometimes we inadvertently, it's obviously not on purpose, we forget Hashem. And this is why we have to remember that every stress, every crisis, big or small, and of course, I don't wish any of these crises on anyone, big or small, is an opportunity to turn to Hashem, whether it's with a, a verse from Psalms or your own personal prayers, we have to train ourselves that throughout our day, we can always look to Hashem for salvation. And we can always say, you know, Davin for the coming of Mashiach for the ultimate salvation. Because when we join our own personal difficulties, our own personal yearnings to the yearnings of the Shekhinah, our prayers are very effective. Now, Rebbe Nachman tells a story. And the story is, uh, it's sometimes called simplicity. It's called the king's boots. And I'm going to tell it to you briefly. Once upon a time, there was a king. And he decided to make a hunting party as kings do. And he dressed in comfortable clothes so that he would be free to move around. He got on his horse and all his ministers joined him to go on this hunting party. And as they were traveling through the woods, getting ready to really begin the hunt, all of a sudden there was thunder and lightning and a terrible storm came down. And it was like a marble, like a flood. It just drenched everyone. And the ministers, the entire retinue of all the royal ministers fled. They all went to drier ground so that they would not get wet and they wouldn't be in danger from the lightning. And the poor king was left on his own. And he went and he sought shelter and he found 
a woodsman in the woods and a little cottage, a little one room cottage. And he knocked at the door and the woodsman let him in. And he said, oh, my king. I didn't know he was the king. Excuse me. He said, oh, my traveler, you are drenched. He said, come on in. Let me dry your clothes by the fire. Let me give you some kasha to eat. And let me give you my straw bed. And we can lie down by the fire and sleep. And the king went to sleep and rested. In the morning, while the king was still sleeping, there was a knock at the door. All the royal ministers, their clothes all dry, knocked at the door during the sunny day and said, King, we've come to take you home in the royal carriage. And the king looked at them and he said, you all fled when the rainstorm hit. You didn't care about me then. He said, but this simple woodsman, he gave me the bowl of kasha. He shared his dinner with me. He dried my clothes. He let me sleep in his bed by the fire. And he's the one who's going to be traveling with me home, back to the palace. And he's going to sit by my throne. Now, Rebbe Nachman says about this story that in the future, which is today, right now, in the future, there will be a flood. It will be a flood of atheism. It will be a flood of immorality. And all the royal ministers will be running for cover. But it's these simple Jews with simple amuna and Hashem, with simple faith and belief, who sit and say psalms all day. These are the ones who are going to greet the Mashiach and be honored with placing the crown upon his head. Okay, now, this story is very obvious, uh, obvious meaning, and we understand the importance of really clinging to our faith and clinging to our safer to Helen during these really, really treacherous times. Uh, if you don't believe they're treacherous, just turn on the news <laughs> and you will see that they are. And in this story, there is an option to view it somewhat differently. In my creative writing course, in my Breslov creative writing course, I have a student, Naomi Mass. And Naomi did a version of this story from the point of view of one of the ministers who halfway through this flea of the king, the rain, realizes that he's made a mistake. He goes to bed, he tosses and turns all night, and he regrets that he didn't seek the king in this crisis. If you'd like to read Naomi's story, you can read it in uh, this collection of stories from the students in my class, The Three-Cornered Shoe. And in this point of view, this minister teaches us a lesson, or Naomi teaches us a beautiful lesson. And that lesson is that no matter at what point you feel like you've abandoned your amuna, you can always return. You can always pick yourself up and return. Now, before I spoke about how sometimes in the big picture with big crises, it's easy to cling to Hashem. We feel tested and we rise to the occasion. We're like heroes. But in the little things, in the moment where we forget Hashem, it's okay five minutes later, half an hour later, two days later, to remind ourselves that our amuna was weakened. And now we have the opportunity to look for Hash to Hashem for salvation, to pick ourselves up and to start over again. Never think that you've blown it. Always believe you can start over again. Okay. Um, I want to, think, to speak about these two concepts that are embedded in Psalm 121. These are the ideas of Amuna and Mahut, okay, which is this week's Sephira. We are in the final week of Sephira's HaOmer, the week of Mahus. And what is Mahu? So on the simple level, it represents Hashem's authority in this world, his kingship. 
And Rebbe Nachman teaches that we must have a Muna in order to express and actualize and accept Hashem's kingship in this world. So we have to have a Muna in Hashem in order to accept his sovereignty. But Rebbe Nachman says something amazing. He says we also have to have a Muna in ourselves. We have to believe in ourselves and believe that Hashem created each one of us, everyone who's listening here and beyond, that each one of us has a specific life mission that no one else can accomplish. Your life mission isn't going to look like anyone else's life mission. You shouldn't compare yourself to anyone else because you do yourself a disservice. And by believing in yourself that you have something very important to do in your life, maybe many things, it may not look so important from the outside, but it is important because Hashem gave you life and he put you in this world to accomplish. And when we have Amuna in ourselves, we are reiterating our Amuna in Hashem. We're saying, Hashem, I know you put me here for a reason. Everything Hashem does is for a reason. And that is a deep expression of Amuna. Now, Rabbi Nachman also teaches that everyone has their own personal malchut. Everyone has their own malchus. What does this mean? So for one person, their kingship, or in this case, queenship, might be they're in charge of an organization, very important organization, chesed organization. And for another person, this might mean they're a teacher in a classroom. And for most people, it might mean you're in charge of your home and your children. Okay, this is your domain. This is your area of malchut. Okay, but there is one area of personal mahus, a personal mahut that all of us have. And that is queenship over ourselves. When we accept that we truly have authority over our own thoughts and our feelings and our actions, we are taking charge of our own personal malchut. Something to keep in mind during this last week of Sefirah HaOmer. Okay, now, we have to have this emuna in order to begin to exercise over the authority over ourselves. We have to have emuna in ourselves. We have to go back and believe that we're here for a reason. And when we do that, we understand we have a big responsibility. We're in charge of ourselves. We're in charge of our lives. And to the best of our ability, we have to begin exercising this mahu, this queenship over ourselves. Now, hopefully you can see the connection between emuna and mahu. And we take our thoughts and our emotions and we turn them to Hashem and we remember the second verse that my help comes from Hashem, the maker of heaven and earth. And this actualizes the media of Malchut in this world. I hope that that, that connection is apparent to you. Okay. Now, um, if you could mind muting, I'm sorry, it's just hard for me to concentrate. Okay, thank you. We are coming up to Shavuot, when we receive the Torah. And your neshama and mine were there for Matan Torah, to receive the Torah. And God willing, we will be all receiving the Torah this Shavuot. It's up to us whether we want to receive it or not. Now... At the time of the first Matan Torah, yeah, at, Har Sinai, at Har Sinai, the Talmud tells us that each Jew was given two crowns, one for Nase and one for Nishma, one for I will do and one for I will listen. 
And the Talmud tells us that 600,000 angels came down and placed both these crowns on each Jewish neshama. And on Erev Shavuot, the Sephira of Malchut Sheba Malchut is the time to remember these crowns, to embrace the fact that we have our own royal signs on us that we will do and we will listen. We will take charge of our own selves and we will turn to Hashem and we will look to Hashem for salvation. We daven that the Mashiach comes, bringing us the salvation we sorely need in this world, in this time. May it happen speedily in our days. Okay, thank you, everyone. Wow. Uh, amen, amen. Thank you so much for sharing this message. I... It's, it spoke directly to my heart. Uh, perhaps I'll share a little, but I want to turn it over to others in the group that may, may like to ask a question uh, or have a comment. Please feel free to unmute yourself so that you can share. Uh, it's, I see many, many messages here on the side just thanking you for such a powerful message. It, it, ah. it hit in, it's hit in such, a, in such an incredible way. The concept number number one, yes, of, of believing in ourselves. The concept of machut for ourselves, like that, it, it's such an amazing, it's such an amazing thing. And the fact that sometimes we do, it's the small stuff that 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 uh, that gets us, and not allowing ourselves to feel guilty when we do stumble because we are human beings. And that's essentially, it's the yetsahara that wants us to then not believe again, not to get up and realize, okay, there was a, there was this fault in my amunah, but I can get up and I can, I can grasp it again. I can do it again. Uh, and I think that that's such an important concept that many of us can struggle with. Uh, so I, I just want to thank you so much for sharing this and, and taking of your time. And I, again, I want to open it up to anybody that has any questions, but I want to, until somebody does, if somebody does, please feel free to raise your hand. Otherwise I'll share, but I want you guys to share first. I want to give you the opportunity. Okay. I have to tell you, uh, Chai Rivka, that what you shared really uh, hit me, hit home for me, especially today. I had a I had a little bit of a, a rough time. My my aunt just passed away on Thursday, which brings with it all these other emotions. I know that she's in a better place. I know that she's with the Shechena and she's dancing in Shamaim and she passed away. It was Yom Yerushalayim. It was the yard side of Shmuel Navi. I mean, right before Shavuot. So many incredible things. She, uh, unfortunately, she never was married. She never had children, which in itself is a very, very painful thing in terms of her legacy. And so I'm trying to take upon myself different things, uh, something that I can take on to ensure that her legacy continues uh, and that the message that she left in this world continues. But I had a rough couple of days because sometimes the people that love us most sometimes or just people in general can say certain things that can really hurt us and sort of break us. And sometimes it's the, it's words that hurt more than broken bones. It happened to be also, I fell yesterday going to the Kotel and I twisted my ankle. But to be honest, it's not the ankle that I'm thinking of. It's the words that people sometimes say, and it's not because they don't love us, but you know, uh, comparisons of, oh, you know, I guess people putting on me in a sense, because I'm not married. I don't have my, I didn't find my zivu yet. I don't have children yet. I pray. Hashem. I know Hashem didn't forget me, but taking what happened to her and sort of putting that on me and sort of nitpicking, well, why is it that I'm not married? It really hurts. It really hurts, especially when you're trying to achieve something and you're trying to do your very best. And it just, it's, it was like a punch to the stomach on top of feeling this pain for my aunt. I loved her. I was very close to her. She lived by us for many, many years. And I sort of had a knockout punch this morning. I was really knocked out. I have to thank all of you women. I, I want to thank you all. And I want to thank you. Why? Because I was able to get up because of all of you. That's, that's the honest truth. I was able to get up because of you. And, you know, you said 
right? Shem Alot Esa Nai El Haharim Ayn Yavo Ezri. Ezrim Im Hashem, right? So sometimes we can feel, and we can look up, and we just, Esa Nai El Haharim Ayn Yavo Ezri. Where is my help going to come from? Now, yes, Ezrim Im Hashem. If we have that Munan Hashem, Hashem is able to help us. But sometimes when we're in such this like, low position, and it's so hard, we, we don't know. We say, Hashem, but I, I don't see you. Where, 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 where can I see you? Also, Izrim Im Hashem, within every one of us is the Nitzots of Hashem. So when we're feeling like we're drowning in a sea of troubles, and this is very much the essence of one of the other organizations I started, which, is, which its main function is the usher in Mashiach, it's called life vest inside. The idea is that when you're in a sea of troubles and you feel like you can't breathe, that you're drowning, it's, it's kindness that keeps the world afloat. It's the kindness that we bestow on others and this kindness that others bestow on us that we keep each other afloat. But what is that? What is that kindness? That's the part of us that's Hashem. That's, that's the right. spark of Hashem inside of us. That's right which is why it's so important. We don't realize the message that we send to somebody, the parak of Tehillim that we read for somebody's health, the small smile that we give, the taking the extra few minutes not to just ask, how are you doing, but actually to stay and hear what the person says. Those are the life vests that we throw out into the world and that keep the other person afloat. It doesn't magically take away the pain that they're feeling. It doesn't magically, you know, just make it go away, but it gives them the hope, the hope to know it's going to be okay. That is the greatest gift Hashem gave to us, our ability to emulate Him. That's right. Through kindness, through the small things. And I just, I just want to thank all of you. And I want to thank you so much, Chai Rivka, because what you're sharing and sharing of your experience, it, it just brings that message in even further. Uh, so uh, I'm just very, very grateful. Orly, thank you, Orly, for what you just shared, for making yourself so vulnerable. And I want to say Baruch Dayanemes, I'm sorry about your, your aunt. You said something, though, very powerful and very relevant to Shavuot, and that is you talked about kindness. And what is, what is this kindness, this meat of Hashem? And it's so interesting because we're talking, we're going to be reading um, the story of Ruth on Shavuot. And it, this is so connected to this week's Sephira as well because Ruth was given, because of her kindness, Mahut, the Mahut of Yisrael. She was given the Mahut of that Mashiach should be her ancestor. So kindness is also a very important component of, of this, um, of Mahut. And I didn't realize it now until you just said it. So, so thank you. Thank you, really thank you, because uh, what you shared, like I said, it hit me and it, and it, it brought this in, in, into light. And, it, and it's so, it's, just, it's very fitting because what I wanted to share also after this, I spoken to some of you about a film that I created for the, organ, for the organization Life Fest Inside uh, that I created that was 12 years ago through the miracles of Hashem, how it spread out to the world, reached over a hundred million people Honestly, I, I can't understand it for the life of me, how that happened, okay? Uh, I, I, really, I really can't. My purpose in starting the organization was this, is the same, connected to the same purpose why I started Abraham's Legacy, even though, yes, it was in memory of my grandfather, but the, the essence of it is all to do with wanting to have a part in ushering Mashiach in some way. I just want to know that Hashem could say, yeah, she had a small part. It doesn't have to be big. It could be really tiny. I just want a small little piece. And this, this film that I did without having any clue of how it would reach people, I really didn't. I, mean, I was a teacher at the time. I was teaching Chumash and Avi. It was my summer off from teaching. And Chesed was something I incorporated into my classroom on a daily basis. Chesed. And I even had my students 
write a journal. It was called Life Vest Inside because this whole concept of the organization came about through teaching, where after we learned a specific topic in Torah, they each wrote a journal entry of what was the message Hashem was trying to tell them through that pedic, through oh. a specific pasuk. Beautiful. And, and these are seventh and eighth grade. You have to understand, Chayrufa, these are 12 and 13 year old kids. I have hundreds Creative. of these. I have hundreds of these. Honestly, I, I was inspired by, by what, you, what you did with your book to, to put these together. 12 and 13 year old kids that were coming into school the next day, psyched of, oh my gosh, Orla, you don't know what Hashem showed me. You know, that's like to hear a, a, a child say that and see the connection. What is Hashem trying to tell you? Because, you know, it, it's, it's, something, it's something spectacular. And so it started there and then it turned into this film that reached people. And I want to take the opportunity, especially because what Chai Rufke just shared about the concept of chesed and with Shavuot coming, to showcase this film to you right now, but I want to ask you all to do me a favor while I show it to you. I want you to see if you can spot the two hidden acts of kindness. Like I said, we all keep each other afloat in this world. We all keep each other afloat. I can tell you from experience that messages that some of you here have sent me privately have certainly kept me afloat in times where you didn't even know that your message came at the exact moment. So I want you to see, try to see if you can spot hidden moments of kindness. Oftentimes we think, you know, okay, I do something, let's say for Chaya Rivka, I supercharge her. She goes ahead and she does something, you know, great for Jessica and it supercharges her. And she goes ahead and does something for Cheryl and it supercharges her. But you're not just supercharging the person that you do something for. You're supercharging all of the people that see it, that see the action and say, wow, that's amazing. I want to be a part of that. So think about how many people's lives we've impacted in a crazy way that we have no clue and no idea. So what I'm gonna ask you to do in this short five minute video, that is all based on real life experiences I went through to try and see if you can spot two hidden acts of kindness where somebody that saw something was supercharged and decided to take charge as well. So we're gonna check it out right now. And I wanna hear what you guys have to, you know, have to say. Sometimes I lay under the moon, I thank God I'm breathing, and I pray, don't take me soon, cause I am here for a reason. Sometimes in my tears I drown, but I never let it get me down, so when negativity surrounds, I know
children will play. Does anybody, did anybody see or spot the two acts of kindness here? You could type it in if you don't want to share out loud. So uh, Robin said the hot dog vendor, exactly, right? The hot dog vendor saw what this young man was doing and he said, wow, that's pretty cool. I want in, I want to be in. And so he gave the water bottle so that he could give it to the homeless man. There's another, per oh yes, we hear, Heidi said, the lady giving the rose. The florist, exactly. But I want to tell you, I want we're gonna we're gonna look into this just a little bit deeper for a second, okay? Right, the lady giving the rose. She didn't need to give her the rose, but she saw what this young girl did, spotting this woman there, giving her a bouquet of flowers, and she said, "I want in." But who is this woman? Well, who are any of us really? Do we open our eyes to see people truly? See people? Because we never can know what somebody's going through. Even the person that we're closest to, we can never know what somebody is going through and how our action of doing something kind can help them. And also our action of choosing to do something wrong can destroy them. It's our choice to choose and to choose wisely with every step that we take. So I want us to take a look for a moment over here. Okay, we're going to take a look at this scene. Hopefully you guys can see this. This is the scene of the florist, okay? And feel free to, to leave your comments. So I'm gonna open up the, the chat here so I can, I can see what you guys are saying as, as I'm gonna do this, okay? Or you can unmute yourself. Feel free to unmute yourself as well. What is going on here? Who is this woman? Okay, who, this, who is this woman to the left? This older woman sitting there? Why was it so important that on that day she received flowers? What is she going through? What's her story? There's no right or wrong answer here, by the way. But think for just a moment. You can unmute yourself if you want to share. Who is she? Tell me a little bit, something about her. Let me, let me open up the chat in case somebody doesn't want to uh, unmute themselves. What, where do you, just let me know here. What do you, who, do you, who is she? There's no right or wrong answer. Why is she there alone? Somebody said the, she looks lonely. Okay, why is she lonely? Let's give her more of a backstory. Maybe she's feeling sad. Why? Why is she sad? What happened? Let's give her a little Maybe bit more. Yeah, go ahead. Maybe she's by herself. Maybe she's by herself. Maybe, Maybe her she... family all lives far away. And Maybe she's her... watching the, what appears away. to be, yeah, what appears to be this homecoming or celebration at the age. Jason table. Yeah, you know, that's kind of the backstory that, you know, I, you know, this like what you read into it. 
She's looking longingly, wistfully at the celebration going on at the adjacent table. That's a, that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful story. All of the things you're saying here, she's looking at the family sitting near her. It looks, she looks envious, her birthday, no one to celebrate with. All of these can be true. Maybe her husband died, Bonnie wrote. So I'm going to actually share with you who this woman is. Because I told you, every single scene here is based on a real life experience that I personally went through, something that I went through in my life and is based on a, a true person. So who is she? This woman, her story, she was a teacher. She was a teacher. She loved, 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 loved teaching. She loved her kids. She loved her job. She put her all into it. It wasn't a job for her. It was more of a calling. And she gave everything she possibly could into her, into her students. And it turns out that she ended up getting, getting married late in life. And when she got married, on the day that her husband proposed to her, right in that restaurant, her husband gave her a charm bracelet with three charms on it. One for every child that they hoped and planned to have. But it turns out she got married late in life and she wasn't able to have children. And there she is, her husband just passed. It's one year from the day that he passed. And there she is sitting in the restaurant, sitting alone at the table and feeling lonelier than she ever felt before. She felt that pang of loneliness more than ever. And there she was with that charm bracelet with all those three charms still intact. And this young girl, she doesn't know who she is. This young girl sees her, sees her, buys a bouquet of flowers. Maybe she was thinking of the story Cheryl shared or somebody else shared here. And she gave it to her. What I'm trying to share with you is that every person that you just saw in that film, you saw them on the screen for maybe what? Five, 10 seconds? Every one of them has, this, has a deep backstory, just like the one I shared with you about this woman, this older woman. The actions that we take, they matter. They matter so much. And if we take the time enough to, to open our eyes, to give a story, to the people that we see. And the way that we interact with others will change dramatically. It'll change dramatically. And those small interactions, it's like throwing again, throwing somebody a life vest and throwing another life vest. And what you're doing is you're really throwing out into the world the nitzots of Hashem. You're taking the nitzots that's inside of you, the spark that Hashem gave you that's inside of you, and you're sharing it with others in a very powerful way. And when we do that, we bring Hashem's presence into the world in a tremendous way. So Izrimi im Hashem. Yes, Izrimi im Hashem. Of course, Hashem. But Hashem also put a piece of himself in us. So we are here at the end of the day to help see each other through. And I want to thank all of you because you've all, in one way or another, have thrown a life vest my way. You have, whether you know it or whether you don't know it. And I appreciate it. And Bezrat Hashem, through the things that we learned over this past month and change, going now into Shavuot, receiving the greatest gift, receiving the Torah, which is all based on chesed. It's all based on chesed. And Bezrat Hashem, through the actions that we take and the work that we're doing inside and the work that we bring outside, we should be zocheh to the coming of Mashiach. So thank you all for being here. I want to thank you, Chaya Rivka, for being here as well. Thank you for being a part of this. Uh, I'm, I'm so, so, so grateful. And, uh, you know, I just want you to know that this isn't the end, okay? Some people are, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm going to miss doing these classes. This is not the end. I already have already a couple things in the lineup that are going to be coming up the next month. So I will be emailing you. Uh, and Bezrat Hashem, I, I haven't forgotten about our accountability program that we're going to be doing. Some of you may not know what I'm talking about. Don't worry, you'll get an email. you understand exactly what I'm talking about. But let me thank all of the speakers and let me thank tonight's speaker, 
Chaya Rivka, thank you so, so much. But don't go anywhere because we're going to do our Tihilim. Thank you, Chaya. I am so grateful for your message tonight. We're going to go into our Tihilim read now. With all of the energy that we've shared with all of the, the lessons that we've heard, try to take everything that we've taken in over this past month and let's put it into this Tihilim read. We're going to keep in our mind Chaya Rivka. Continue to feel good, to continue to be able to share your message with the world because we need you. Just like she said, we all have a unique mission. None of our missions are, are, are the same as the other, which means we need every one of us to continue to live their mission. Uh, so please, let's all have that in mind. Please also keep in mind during the Tihilim read, my aunt Malka, Malka Regina, Bat Fortuna Khatun, and for everything that Am Yisrael needs. So here we go. Our Tihilim read. Our last one for the Tihilim time Omer edition. Not our last one. We never have a last one. We always continue. Here we go. On behalf of Abraham's legacy, we are excited to lead you in a Tihilim reading where each and every one of us from wherever we are in the world can easily join in and complete a book of Tihilim in unison within minutes through a very special app called Abraham's Legacy, Tehillim Together, in memory of Avraham ben Polin. To be part of the global Tehillim read happening now, download Abraham's Legacy on your mobile device from the App Store, available for iOS and Android. You can also scan this QR code with your phone. To scan a QR code, simply open the camera on your phone and hold it up to this image. A link will appear on top, which you can click, and it will direct you to download the app. I'll give you all a moment to download the app. Sign in, and in a minute, we will all click on the Start Reading button on the main screen, and each of us will receive a different peric from the Sefer of Tehillim so that we can complete the book and add to the global count. In the top right corner, you can click the icon to switch your language if you like. You'll also be able to see in real time the amount of people reading and countries reading. Don't forget, you'll need to confirm that you've completed the chapter. Let's put a few minutes on the clock to read in unison so that we can unleash the power of our combined tefillah. Tiskul mitzvot. Shemesh 
הלב שבור לחתיכות, נחכה לך שתקבל פנינו. נחכה קרה בלילות, ועוד ניצח ברחובות, רחם עלינו אבא הושיענו, הושיענו. הלב שלי נקרע לשניים, מה שלא ראתה שפחה על המים, כמו סופה מן הים עולה, כמו תופה של מרים פועם, אין תרופה בעולם. הלב שלי מרים ידיים, כבר מועד לא עומד על הרגליים, שבר כלי שאין בו כבר מה, והשמיים הם בלי חומה, איך אעבור בתוך הים, ביבשה. ורק אתה יכול להפוך מספדי למחול, לזכך את החול. לרכך בי הכל, ורק אתה מבין איך לגשת ללב שלי, משכך כל כאב שבי, מרפא את הלב. הלב שלי נקרא לשניים, חציו השם וחציו לשם שמיים, כמו סופה מן הים עולה, כמו תופה של מרים פועם, ואין תרופה בעולם ללב. ורק אתה יכול להפוך מספדי למחול, לזכך את החול, לרכך בי אתה מבין איך לגשת ללב שלי, משכך כל כאב שבי, מרפא את יש אוצר שמציק לצאן, ואין ציר שיצעק לצור. רק אני מול ים שלם ולב שבור. ורק אתה יכול להפוך מספדי למחול, לזכך את החול, לרכך בי הכל. ורק אתה... מבין איך לגשת ללב שלי, משכך כל כאב שבי, מרפא את הלב. ורק אתה יכול להפוך מספדי למחול, לזכך את החול, לקדש בי הכל. And you can go ahead and you can complete the perek that you're on. Baruch Hashem, we not only finished the sefer, we're a third, more than a third into another sefer. So it's absolutely amazing. Uh, and I'm so grateful for all of you taking part in this. Use this as much as you can. Reach out to me if there's things that you see that are not working. I want to continuously make this better. So I do want to hear from you. You can always message me. You can message me uh, via email. You can message me on WhatsApp. And I will do my best to get back to every single person. 
Uh, so please, please do. And I'm excited for where we're going next. I will make sure to follow up with everyone via email about our next programming and about our accountability program, which we're going to be doing Bezrat Hashem once a week. Uh, more on that is going to come in the email. I want to, before we end off and say our goodbyes, but it's not goodbyes, it's just see you later. Uh, I, we're going to be doing a raffle. Uh, now, over this past uh, you know, month and change, we had a raffle going on and we had many different people that have taken part in it. We're having three separate packages with a lot of exciting books and materials. I'm going to go through all of that right now. And we're going to have three winners. But I want to, before, um, before I share my screen and we do the raffle, I just want to uh, thank all of those that took part uh, and contributed towards the raffle. If you dedicated a chapter for the week or the month, make sure that you check out an email I sent you so that you send me the name and which chapter. For most of them, I've already gotten it up. Some of them I haven't yet, but I will over this next uh, 24 hours. Irregardless of whether you contributed monetarily or not, please know that I appreciate you tremendously. Okay, so you just being here and being a part of this and sharing and learning is a tremendous gift. So I want to thank you. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly go just down the names just to say thank you out loud and just express my gratitude. Uh, Svetlana Ershov, Barbara Hollander, Karen Sarto, Sima Jor, Daniela Santup. I apologize if I'm saying if I'm pronouncing anyone's names wrong. Uh, Ida Weingram, uh, Naomi Serfati, Sir, Susan Strasberger, Susan Cohen, Jessica Savitt, uh, Felisa Lane, uh, Sarah uh, Dahan, Sarah Rutman, Angela Ashravaski, uh, Ella Asbenad, uh, Uzalida Lors, Deborah Silverman, Katerina Deregibus, Dere Chaya Farkas, Marcel Kaufman, um, Miriam Stein, Sima Sel Selmar, Sarah Dahan, Alyssa Mezbesh, Angelica Mancella, Rachel Porges, uh, Toby Bonnet, Bonnet, Jill Hedea, Chaya Obstfeld, Esther Simon, Seti Baum, uh, Esther Devaroli, Ruti Mizrahi, Shal Horowitz, Bonnie Papovsky, Robin Kravitz, Julie Greenman, Angela Ashravsky, Sarah Miriam Grossman, Harold Goldberg, uh, Bonnie Malamid, uh, Miriam Orent, and Jillian Galitzer. Some of you have given twice, so you're in the raffle twice. Your name will appear twice in the actual raffle. But I just want to thank all of you so much for being a part of this because it helps us continue to grow the app and add additional features, which Bezrat Hashem are going to be incredible. So here we go. Our first raffle is going to include the Nitila cup, the 100% pure copper Nitila cup, a tour of uh, Ir David um, given by myself when you are here in Yerushalayim or if you live in Yerushalayim or in Israel and you come to Yerushalayim, it's going to be a tour of uh, Ir David walking in the footsteps of David Melech. Um, the, for, the book from, from Your Lips to God's Ears by Ruben Ibrahimov. A parak of Tehillim will be um, listed in honor and memory of a loved one throughout the app for the course of a year. Okay, so you're going to choose your chapter. And it's going to be for the course of a year. Um, as well as Organized Jewish Life. Ah, this is a wonderful book that Rebecca Saltzman um, uh, gifted to me as well. This is going to be one of them. And then by Rebetzin Miriam Yushalmi, Heavenly Waters, Reaching New Heights Through Prayer and Meditation, Reaching New Heights Through Kindness and Marriage, and The Boundary Is You by Hani Rosengarten. So for our first raffle, the winner is, and we're going to spin our wheel. If you win, please make sure to email me your um, make sure to email me your address so I can get you the raffle prizes. Okay, here we go. And our first winner is Sima Drawer. Congratulations. Now our second winner. The second raffle is going to also include Nitila, Nitila, the book from your lips to God's ears, a parak of Tehillim for the year, organized Jewish life by Rivka Saltzman, uh, Rebecca Saltzman, and by Chai Rivka Zwolinski. Uh, May you have a day, Mashiach, hope for turbulent times, the three-cornered shoe. Uh, this is a fantastic, fantastic prizes here. And the spring issue of the Uplift Jewish Women's Magazine. All of this is included in our second raffle. And so our second raffle winner is and the winner is Uzlita Lors. 
Congratulations. And our third raffle, which includes Nitila, a parak of Tehilim, Exploring Tehilim by Rebetzin Malka Kaganoff, Amazing Hypnotherapy Tales by Bracha Pearl Topperwich, Software for the Soul, Psalms for Everyone, and Discovering the Inner Meanings, and Transforming Your Life by Kaylee Zaytuni. So our third raffle winner is... Angela Ostrovsky, Zlatik Ostrovsky. Congratulations on the win. So those are our, uh, our raffles. I will, I'm doing one more raffle of just the tour. So it's going to be a tour here in Yerushalayim. Um, this is just an added bonus. So here we go, our final raffle. And the winner is Sima Salmar. Mazal tov to all of the winners. Please do send me an email uh, to info at abrahamslegacy.com with your address so that I can get you all of the books. And um, again, like I said, to me, you're all winners. I'm very, very grateful for all of you being here. More details on our upcoming, uh, on our upcoming events shortly. I see somebody ask about the email address. I'm going to type it over here for you. It's info at abrahamslegacy.com. I'll also place for you my WhatsApp number. Feel free to message me. Um, I'd be more than happy to hear from any of you. So thank you all for being here. We're going to end our, our, um, our program, this section of the program. I'm wishing you all an incredible, incredible Chag Shavuot that's coming up. And remember, everyone, Tehillim, Tefillah, it changes us. And when we change, our whole world changes. Thank you for being part of changing my world. Have a great night, everybody.